सो फर्स्ट वी विल सी वॉट इज काउंटर्स सो काउंटर्स आर डिजिटल सर्किट और अ डिवाइस दैट स्टोर्स द नंबर ऑफ इवेंट्स ऑफ अ स्पेसिफिक इवेंट और प्रोसेस टिपिकली इन रिलेशन टू अ क्लॉक सिग्नल काउंटर्स आर यूज इन डिजिटल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स टू काउंट स्पेसिफिक इवेंट्स दैट अकर इन द सर्किट Mainly there are two types of counters synchronous counters and asynchronous counters so you can see here this is a synchronous counter it is also known as a parallel counter and the operation is fast if we compare it with asynchronous counters the synchronous counters has a single global clock that drives each flip flop allowing output to change in parallel and it can operate at higher frequencies in this type of counters all the flip flops clock inputs use the same source and produce the output at the same time so yes you can see in this diagram a same clock is given to all the flip flops and we are getting the output in a parallel manner this is the example of a synchronous counter which is also called as a ripple counter and it is made up of a series of flip flops if the flip flops do not receive the same clock signals the counter is referred to as a asynchronous only the first flip flop receives a clock signal from the system clock the remaining flip flops receive the clock signal from the previous stage flip flop output as you can see in this figure second flip flop is getting its clock from the output of the first flip flop then again the third one is getting its clock from the output of the second flip flop so in this way the asynchronous counter is working talking about the application of counters so it can be used as a frequency division event counting sequence generation address generation digital display frequency measurement pulse width measurement data communication pseudo random number generation so there are multiple application of counters in digital systems Also we can implement counters by using various coding styles some commonly used counters are binary counters bcd counters gray code counters ring counters johnson counters and decade counters so binary counters means it will count in binary manner that is 0 or 1 bcd counters that is a decimal counters follows a sequence of 10 states and returns to 0 after the count of 9 such a counter must have at least 4 flip flops to represent each decimal digits since a decimal digit is represented by a binary code with at least 4 bits then we have gray code counters which counts in gray code manner then we have ring counters which is the simplest example of shift register the simplest counter is called the ring counter and this ring counter contains only one logical one or zero which circulates the total cycle length is equal to the number of stages it is useful in the application where the count has to be recognized in order to perform some other logical operation then we have johnson counter which is a modified ring counter in which the output from the last flip flop is inverted and fed back as an input to the first it is also called as inverse feedback counter or twisted ring counter then we have decade counter which counts in decimal manner so these all are the different types of counter based on their counting style also these counters can have a positive edge triggered clock or the negative edge triggered clock it can count in binary or decade manner and its counting direction could be in upward direction or downward direction or it could be up down counter in positive edge triggered the clock samples the input line at the positive edge of the clock pulses this state of the output of the flip flop is set or reset depending upon the state of the input at positive edge of the clock mean to say if in your counter it is positive edge triggered that means the output will change its state in the positive edge of the clock similarly in case of negative edge triggered the output changes its state in negative edge of the clock signal these flip flop can be a jk flip flop or a t flip flop or a d flip flop if you are looking to implement a counter circuit so this is all about the theory part guys now we are moving to what's the verilog coding part so first example we have taken is for the up counter so you can see here the coding part first we have taken the module then the module name and the input output signals which are clock reset d in load and count so d in is the input of 4 bits then clock reset and load which is a single bit input and then the reg type 4 bit output which is count always at pause edge clock so the first condition which we are taking is reset if the reset signal is high then zero is assigned to the count else if the load signal is high then this d in which is the input is assigned to the count else the count is nothing but count plus 1 tick d1 mean to say 
suppose here we have a counter which counts in upward direction 0 1 2 3 4 5 in this manner it counts so the highest priority we are giving here is to the reset signal if the reset signal is high in your counter that time simply you have to assign 0 to the count output then if reset is low then you have to check the load signal so the load signal has the second top priority if the load signal is high then this data input is given to the count signal if both reset and load signal is low that time the counter will start doing the up counting so count equals to count plus one tick d1 so this is how your counter will work and finally the end module so this is a very simple code then we will see the test bench part how you can write the test bench so module then the up counter tb reg type input we have taken here wire type output and then we have done the instantiation up counter dut and then all the input output signals then we have taken here multiple initial blocks if you have watched my last video where i have asked this question that how many initial blocks can be there in a verilog code i think in fourth or fifth video of verilog practice question i have asked this question and the answer was there could be multiple initial block in a verilog code but their simulation is depending on the order which we are given here so here i think you will get a more detailed explanation why we can use different initial block so the first initial block here we are initializing the clock signal so first we are assigning zero to the clock and then forever hash my clock equals to negation of clock so in this way you can generate a clock signal then in second initial block we have initialized the value reset load and d in with zero so this is the input initialization and finally in the third initial block we have given different set of inputs so reset load and d in so different different variations we have given here if reset then what we are getting if load is high then what we are getting if both low and d in is given then what we are getting and how this counter will perform up counting so here we are giving different sets of input just to check whether our circuit is working properly or not then finally in the last initial block we have given this dollar monitor command and then after 120 nano nanosecond we are giving dollar finish command just to finish the simulation and finally the end module so in this way you can write the test bench and here the simulation will occur in order wise so first initial block will first simulate it then the second initial block then the third initial block so this is what i was trying to explain in that video why we should take care of the order of the initial blocks in our code so guys after writing this code and test bench you can simulate and check the output and the waveform either you can use the EDA playground which is an open source tool or you can use model sim also so this is how uh, I am getting the output here so you can see as we have provided different sets of input based on that we are getting the output so you can check with all those values and finally this is the waveform which we are getting so you can check where the reset is high where the load is high then what we are getting in the count output so this is how finally we have completed the first code the code writing the test bench writing then the the output which we are getting and the generated waveform i hope everything is clear to you coming to the next code which is of up down counter up down counter means it is a counter which can count both in up and down direction depending on what is the value of the input signal if this up down signal is high then it will perform the up counting and if this up down signal is low then it will perform the down counting so here you can see the code module up down counter then clock reset load d in up down and count 4 bit d in input is given here then clock reset load and up down which is of single bit inputs and then the four bit count output which is of reg type this is also a similar kind of code only a small change is there if reset then zero will be assigned to the count if load then d in is given to the count if up down signal is high then it will perform up counting so count equals to count plus four tick d1 else count equals to count minus four tick d1 else means what this up down signal is low so that time this counter will perform the down counting and finally the end module so you can see here only a small change is there between up counter and up down counter remaining structure is same only this is the test bench part initial part is same module then up down counter tb reg type input wire type output then we have done the instantiation here up down counter dut clock reset load d in up down count and then in first initial block we have generated the clock signal in second initial block we have initializes the value with zero and in third initial block we have given different sets of input signals to check whether we are getting correct output or not and finally in last initial block we are giving dollar monitor command and dollar 
particular finish command so you can see here the output which we are getting when it is performing the up counting and the down counting you can check here and finally this is our output waveform so you can see here when this up down signal is high then it is performing the up counting 4 5 6 7 8 9 the counting is increasing when this up down signal is low then it start decreasing means it is doing the down counting 9 to 8 then this load signal is high so if the load signal is high then the d in value will be loaded to the count so d in value is 1 here so 1 is reflecting at the count value so this is how you can check whether your waveform is correct or not coming to the third code which is of up mod 12 counter that means it is doing up counting from 0 till 11 when it reaches to 12 it's again coming back to 0 this is how this up counter mod 12 is working so module up mod 12 counter clock reset load d in and count then 4 bit input d in clock reset load and then reg type count output always at pause edge clock we have given the condition for reset then the next condition is if load equals to 1 and count is less than 4 tick b double 1 double 0 that is nothing but 12. So if the load signal is high and the count value is less than 12 then only this d in value will be loaded to the count signal. Else if the count is equal to 4 tick b 1011 which is 11. So if the count value reaches to the 11 then it will come back to 0. So 0 is assigned to the count signal. Otherwise the count is incremented by 1. So count equals to count plus 4 tick d1. So simply the working is explained here. If reset is high, 0 is assigned to count. If load is high, then we have to check that the count value should be less than 12. Then only d in will be loaded to the count signal. If the count reaches to the 11, then it will come back to 0. And if nothing is there, no condition is matches, that time it will perform the up counting operation. So this is how you can write the code for up mod 12 counter. This is the test bench part, very much similar. Only you have to provide different set of input values here to check whether it is performing mod 12 counting or not remaining all the things are same first we have taken reg type input wire type output then the initial then the instantiation first initial block for the clock generation second initial block for the input initialization then in third initial block we have given different sets of input signals and finally dollar monitor and dollar finish so after performing the simulation this is the output which i am getting here you can see the count is increasing from one double 0, 101, 110, 0, 111, then 100, 1001, 1010, 1011. After reaching to 1011, it will come back to 40. So, this is how you can check whether it is working in correct manner or not. This is the waveform which we are getting from here also. You can verify the working of your circuit. Guys, now it, this is a time to come the last code of today's video, which is counter 3 to 12. So, here simply we have to design a counter which counts from 3 to 12. So, you can see here it is bit different. It is not starting its counting from 0 and not going to 15 because in 4 bit counter the simple way of working is from 0 to 15 it will count and then come back to 0. But here what we have to design a counter which can count from 3 till 12. So, see how we can write the code. So, module counter 3 to 12 the module name which we have given here then clock reset load data count then 4 bit data input clock reset load and reg type 4 bit count that is the output always at pause edge clock first we have assigned here 4 tick d3 to the count why we are assigning here because we want to initialize our count value with 3 only not with 0 so that's why in this always block the first thing which we have written here is count equals to 4 tick d3 then we have given the condition here if reset then 0 is assigned to count value if reset then 0 is assigned to count then if load signal is high that time we need to check then that the count is greater than or equal to 4 tick d3 and less than equal to 4 tick d12 if the count value is in between of that and the load, load signal is high then only the data input will be loaded to the count signal else if the count reaches to the 4 tick d12 then it will come back to 3 so count equals to 4 tick d3 if no condition will match that time this count equals to count plus 4 tick d1 that means simply it is performing the up counting operation between 3 to 12 and the end module so this is how you can write the code 
for the given condition only you have to check what condition you can give and at what time you have to check that it will come back to zero or it will perform the up counting or the down counting this is only the thing here is the test bench part very much similar only you have to given the value reset load and data just to check whether the circuit is working properly or not so this is the output which i am getting here and this is the final waveform so this is it guys this is about today's video i hope it will be helpful for you the counter coding is now clear to you if you are feeling that your very low concepts are not that clear for interview point of view you can watch this playlist where i have uploaded topic wise videos of very log so just check out the playlist and let me know if it will be useful for you or not we will meet in the next video